Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another exciting new genetic engineering and biotechnology news webinar. Our presentation today is entitled Automated Two-Step Purification of Antibody Drug Candidates. I'm Jeff Bogliskis, technical editor for GEN, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar presentation. Protein purification has been a cornerstone of modern laboratory science for decades. During that time, researchers have developed a vast array of equipment and techniques in order to circumvent many of the inherent complexities that can often grind purification to painfully slow pace. Furthermore, traditional methodologies can stall the drug candidate screening and drug discovery processes, costing investigators precious time and money and all too often yielding inadequate product. Let's meet our presenters for this gen webinar who will provide us with detailed information about automated multi-step processes for the purification of antibodies, which eliminate manual intermediate steps, increasing repeatability and efficiency. Our first speaker today will be Christine Markulan Johansson, Senior Research Engineer at GE Healthcare Life Sciences, who has been working in R&D with the development of chromatography systems and protein purification for more than 25 years. She will briefly introduce some of the concepts behind the traditional approaches many researchers use when thinking about protein purification, and will circle back to describe some of the equipment and strategies for multi-step purification processes designed to increase efficiency and product yield. Our two additional speakers will be Erwin von Puyenbuch, scientist and team leader, and Matthias Ehrman, senior associate, both with F. Hoffman LaRoche. Erwin and Matthias will take us through the methodology they have employed for quickly purifying multiple antibody samples using the ActiPure system. So before we get started, I want to encourage the audience to submit questions for our Q&A session at the end of the presentation. We will try and answer as many questions as we can, so simply type your question into the Q&A box at the left-hand side of your screen and hit Submit. So let's begin our webinar and open the floor to our first speaker. Christine? Hello, everybody. My name is Christine. Uh, welcome to this webinar on automated two-step purification of antibody drug candidates. I will start with a short introduction uh, to automated multi-step purification. And then I will hand over to Erwin from Hoffman Roche, who will talk about how they have used automated two-step chromatography for purification of antibody drug candidates. Finally, I will come back and give you some examples of how G Healthcare can support you to perform multi-step purification in an automated way. Development of pharmaceutical products needs intensification in all steps. Efficient and robust ways of working can help certain shorten the total development time and generate high quality products. This is true for both research and pilot scale, and today we will focus on the research part. Traditionally, a purification process includes two or three chromatography steps, which are used in different combinations to purify a protein. As illustrated on the picture to the left, the eluate from one step is collected into flasks and then manually transferred on to the next step. These manual interactions add time to the overall purification process as well as increase the risk of errors. And in many cases, the conditions used to eluate the protein in the first step is not optimal for the product. Uh, it could be too high salt concentration or too low pH and therefore time between steps is crucial to maintain high stability of your product. So how can we meet these challenges? Uh, well, by running automated multi-step purification using a Nectar Pure or a Nectar Van, you will reduce manual interaction and you remove the need for storage tanks in between different chromatography steps. This will increase efficiency of your process, but also the stability of your product. So 
With that, I will hand over to Erwin and Matthias from Hoffman Roche, who will show you results from automated two-step purification of antibody drug candidates. So please, Erwin, start. Thank you, Christine. Uh, welcome to all of you who join our part of the webinar. In this presentation, Matthias and I will present to you our work on automated two-step purification of antibody drug candidates. Our part is divided into six parts. First, I will explain why we want to develop such a process and what the aim for this process was. Secondly, Matthias will go more into detail regarding the hardware, especially the Ector Pure, Auto Semper, and the columns we used. Then the tricks and steps he used for the programming of both machines and the communication will be discussed before we go to the results and summary. In the pharmaceutical industry, the need for new and clean tumor targets is very big. In order to generate new antibodies against these targets, these companies can use immunization or phage libraries. These techniques result in a very big number of potential binders which then need to be produced, purified, and characterized. On a very small scale, let's say 10 to a few hundred micrograms, this is rather easily handled by the use of automated one-step high-throughput micropurification. For antibodies where only the affinity is tested, this gives a good enough quality to assess the binding of these antibodies by SVR or cell binding assays. However, when bigger amounts in higher quality are needed, one-step micropurifications are not suited anymore. Especially when a specific formulation buffer is needed, one has to use two-step purification processes. The aim of the process we wanted to set up was to be able to ensure a fast supply of high-quality antibodies for screening purposes in biological assays. As aggregates leads to false results in in vitro assays, it was essential for us to have a process in place which can remove any side products. Normally, a standard two-step process is used for this, a protein A step followed by a size exclusion step. With this setup, one person would need around four days to purify 24 samples. But this is too long if you want to screen 100 antibodies or more. Our problem did not lie in developing a process which can capture and formulate antibodies and also remove aggregates. The biggest challenge we had was to have not only a very fast purification process, but also have a good recovery. We wanted to be able to purify up to 24 samples in 24 hours with yields between 50 and 500 micrograms. And a good recovery meant for us 65%. With this, I hand over to Matthias. Welcome all. I'm Matthias Hermann and I have developed this method together with Aaron here in Zurich. This method, method we use to purify transient produced IDGs. Transient productions are fast and allow quick supply of purified antibodies. IDGs are predictable in their elution behavior and the easiest format to select new binders. Here you can see the main components, the Ecta Pure and the Auto Sampler. The Pure is a standard machine equipped with a loop valve and with a multiple column valve. The loop valve is needed to be able to have one loop to collect the peak from the protein A and another loop connected to the outer sampler to load the sample from there. The out one of the outer valves is, needs to be connected with the tubing to the manual load of the injection valve in order to be able to collect the peak from the protein A. Before finding the autosampler from Star Column, we only found autosamplers with fixed sample volumes and or software connection problems or issues with Unicorn. The big advantages of the model from Star Column were for us that Unicorn has no issues with the software of the autosampler, that we have a flexible and individual adjustable sample volume up to 9 ml, and that it's coolable. In this table, you can see the specific hardware we are using for this method. With the Acta Pure, we have a flexible and user-friendly system, which is easy to customize and not too expensive. 
I just mentioned the advantages of the auto sampler. The exact model is the Alia School model 840 from Spark Holland. For the protein A, we chose the map lecture from GE, packed in a tricorn 520 column with a column volume of 100 microliters. We chose this small size to not get a too wide peak as we wanted to collect just 500 microliters in a loop, which is directly loaded onto the size exclusion column. As a size exclusion column, we are using the 10300 SuperDEX 200 increase from GE Healthcare, which allows us to run at higher flow rates than a normal S200 column. And that, of course, saves a lot of time. The loop valve allows the connection of five loops, as mentioned before. We just need two. Before we got the F9C fraction collector, we had the carousel fraction collector F920. Compared to the F920, the F9C allows almost 600 fractions of 2ML to be collected. Several steps were needed to set up the system in the way we wanted it. Initially, we needed to find out how both machines can communicate and which signal they give to each other. How does the auto sampler work and what does it need from Unicorn vice versa? The auto sampler does not have to send a signal to Unicorn. It's the Unicorn software that tells the auto sampler what to do. In the next slides, I will explain how everything was set up. Setting up the basic method, flexible sample volume, scouting with the real sample, combining protein A and size exclusion, optimizing the flow rate, and I will talk a bit about anti-concentration and recovery. As mentioned before, it was important to understand the chosen setup. How does the auto sampler and its software work? The program of the auto sampler works quite simply in two steps. The first step is that the needle goes into the sample while and pumps the sample into a 10 ml loop located in the auto sampler. The next step is to open the flow path that the actor pure can pump the sample from the loop onto the column and that the auto sampler can at the same time wash the needle and get prepared for the next sample. Unicorn only needs to give a digital pulse which tells the auto sampler to do the first or the second step. This means in the Unicorn method, you need to have two times the pulse that the auto sampler can complete one sample. To test the setup, we use the conductivity by injecting salt solutions to verify the correct volumes were loaded when we told the system to do so. As you can see in the slides, it's possible to choose different injection volumes for each individual run when using the same Unicorn method in a scouting setting. The different injection volumes are controlled by the auto sampler software called Sparklink and needed to be programmed by hand. The next step was to write a method in Unicorn for the protein A and test it with real sample. Standard IgG, different volumes and different amounts loaded in a scouting. Scouting is used because with the queue it's only possible to do up to 10 runs in a row with the scouting up to 256 runs. We wrote two different methods, one with a single injection from the auto sampler and one with two injections. In the graph, you can see the protein A run of a method where two vials of the auto sampler, 2 times 9 ml, were filled with the same sample and loaded onto the protein A column directly after each other. Putting a scouting on each method, single and double injection, and combining them in the queue allows you also to include samples up to 18 ml. Theoretically, it's possible to, to do triple or more sample injections in one method. It's just not practical anymore. For all runs we did, we found the program volume loaded and the correct amount of IgG eluded from the protein A column. So everything worked as we wanted it to. After having set up the protein A method, we needed to make sure that the protein A peak was collected into a loop. Having done this successfully allowed us to combine the protein A step with the second purification step, the size exclusion. During initial tests, we did not look at optimizing run times. The flows used were 0.5 ml per minute, respectively 0.75 ml per minute, resulted in a run time of 85 minutes for a single and 100 minutes for a double injection. The graph shows nicely that we could find the protein A in the size exclusion after being eluted from the protein A and collected in the loop. We had the method running fine and it was time to optimize. 
First, we try to increase the flow rate of the size exclusion, as it would save quite some time. Here you can see the results of three different size exclusion runs. For this, we did not use the auto sampler, but injected the samples manually into a loop for standalone size exclusion runs. The differences in the peak area is not caused by differences in the flow rate, but of the small sample volume injected by hand. We used the pool from aggregates and fragments, which showed more clearly if there are differences in the resolution between the flow rates. In the front of the peak, you can see the aggregates, then comes the monomeric peak, which has a shoulder of fragmented IgG. When increasing the flow rate from 0.75 to 1 ml per minute, the resolution is not compromised. Higher flow rates up to 1.5 ml per minute were tested, but flow rates higher than 1 resulted in poorer resolution. In order to maximize the output of the system, we needed to see what the maximum flow rates for this setup are. In total, we tested six different combinations of flow rates. Previously, a method with a single injection needed 85 minutes. By optimizing the size exclusion flow rate, we could already reduce the runtime to 75 minutes. Optimizing the protein A part of the two-step purification, the flow rate and rearrangement of the method blocks, 15 more minutes could be saved. By using a sample flow rate of 0.75 ml per minute and a flow rate of 1 ml per minute during the size exclusion run, we achieved the running time of 60 minutes for a single injection method. This allows us to purify 24 9 ml samples with the protein A and the size exclusion in 24 hours. As you can see, the recovery were between 60 and 77.5%. The achieved recovery of 67.5% with the optimal running time was good, but of course, when there are less than 24 samples to be purified or times allows it, you can decide to increase the recovery by reducing the sample loading flow rate as this has much, much bigger impact on the recovery and then reducing the size of solution flow rate. In the chromatogram, you can see that for all flow rates, the resolution is okay. In order to see if the method is robust and allows big enough quantities to be purified, the titer of the supernatant was adjusted by diluting it with conditioned medium. As you can see on the left, the same sample volume was used three times for each condition with the runtime of 60 minutes. The table on the left shows that the higher the titer, the lower the recovery, but still it's in an acceptable range. When the area under the peak is considered, you can see that the binding capacity of the column is not yet reached, and quantities bigger than 400 micrograms can be loaded. Looking at the individual conditions, it's clear to see that the triplicates are all very close together, indicating that the system is robust and gives reproducible results. It's also clear to see that there is a nice separation between the aggregates and the monomers of the antibody. On the left of the slide, you can see all the method blocks we used in Unicorn. Three most important blocks are highlighted in bold, and I will go more into detail in their programming. First, we have the block that we call auto sample and check sample to the loop, plus wash of the protein A. The pulse of the digital out one for two seconds is needed to start the first step of the auto sampler program, which is to load the sample from the vial into the loop. We have a block time of three minutes, which is needed to load the sample into the auto sampler loop. During this three minutes, a low PA wash or a sip of the protein A column can also be done. The next important block is what we call auto sampler switch valve. Here, a pulse of the digital out one is needed for 10 seconds. The auto sampler switches the valve so that the pure can pump the sample onto the column, and the needle of the auto sampler is washed and gets ready for the next one. We use a block time of 24 seconds. The third important block is the elution from the protein A column. The outlet one must be connected to the syringe connection of the injection valve in order to collect the peak in a loop and the UE watch function should be used to switch the outlet valve. Here you can see the results of a real sample. With the chosen setup, we achieved very nice results with an overall recovery of 76.1%. The chromatogram of Unicorn shows the complete run. In the beginning, we wash the protein A column and the sample is at this time loaded into the auto sampler loop. After a short equilibration, the sample is loaded onto the protein A column. 
As soon as the sample has been loaded, we wash out unbound sample before the elution from the protein A takes place. The peak is collected in a loop, and after short re-equilibration, it's loaded directly onto the size exclusion column. When the size exclusion is completed, we have a quick wash of the flow path in order to eliminate any cross-contamination. Here you can see the overlay of 16 different salting runs. As you can see, the 16 different antibodies behave differently on the size exclusion column. But nevertheless, the separation of the aggregates, monomers, and fragments is good for all of them. By using the fraction collector F9C, we were able to increase the fractionation block in the method. This made sure that even if an antibody behaves a bit different on the S200 increase, the whole peak was collected and no material was lost. With this, I give back to Erwin for the summary. Thanks, Matthias. Summarizing the process we have set up, we can say that the system is very robust and gives re reproducible results for standard IgGs with yields up to around 500 micrograms. It saves a lot of time while also retaining the high quality of a normal two-step process as it is fast and we can supply 24 aggregate-free antibodies in 24 hours. Um, besides being fast, the system is also flexible in respect to the sample volume and can give recoveries of up to 77.5%. Thanks for your attention. Thanks, Erwin and Matisse. That was a very informative presentation, and I think you provided the audience with some great methodology for multi-step purification processes. Before we continue with the second part of Christine's presentation, I want to remind everyone again uh, to submit questions for the Q&A session at the end of the presentations. Simply type your question into the Q&A box on the left-hand side of your screen and hit Submit. All of our speakers will be available to answer your questions after the final presentation. So let's continue. Christine? So hello again. This is Christine. Thank you, Erwin and Matthias for sharing your application and very interesting results. Uh, what you described was one example of how automated multi-step purification can be run, but it can be used on a wide range of purification schemes independent of the application. Uh, different techniques can be combined to reach desired purity, starting with a capture step and continuing with intermediate purification and polishing step when needed. When the capture step is affinity chromatography, the looted protein is often of high purity and only a single polishing step is needed. Your starting point for multi-step purification. To run multi-step purification, you have to create your own methods in Unicorn Method Editor and modify the flow path by adding extra valves to fit your application. And to help you get started, there are two cue cards available from GE Healthcare for support and inspiration. In this two-step purification called using loop collection, the eluted peaks from the first chromatography step is stored in loops and then automatically injected onto the column in the next chromatography step. The second example in the two step purification using tandem configuration, the eluted peaks the, the eluted peak is directly transferred on to the next column. And in the next coming slide I will give you some examples of these two setups. First, we have the loop collection. The loop collection setup is suitable when you want to process more than one peak from the first chromatography step. Up to five different peaks can be stored in loops, and the setup is suitable for most columns and elution combinations. At the bottom right of this slide, you find information about the available cue card in which you will find guidance for how to mount additional needed valves 
and tubing, but also how to download example methods for Unicorn. So how can you set up your ECTA system flow path to use loop collection? You need to add two valves, a mixer valve and a loop valve, as illustrated in the left picture. The eluted peaks from the first column is directed via an extra tubing, as shown in the process picture to the right. Um, the peak is directed from the outlet valve to the mixer valve to the loops on the loop valve and the collected peaks are then injected onto the next column. When using the loop valve, you can add five loops, as I said, to collect intermediate peaks. And we have a multi-purpose holder that can house uh, five 10 milliliter loops, and you can easily attach it on the left side of the instrument, as indicated by the blue arrow. On this slide, we have some results from repeated purification runs using loop collection. The first step is a capture step using Mab Select Shore, um, results not shown here on the slide. Uh, but the second run is a buffer exchange step using high prep resolving column. And in these chromatograms, you can see the results of the overlay curves that shows excellent reproducibility. The recovery from this test was over 90%. If you like to have more information about this test, you can download the case study called Performing Unattended Two-Step Purification with ECTA-Pure. You find the information on the uh, slide. So uh, that was uh, some uh, examples of how you can use loop to run um, two-step purification. In the coming uh, example, I'd like to show you how to run two-step purification using tandem configuration. And that is where the eluted peak is transferred directly to the next column. This configuration is suitable when performing step elution from the first column and generating only one narrow peak. In the cue card, uh, you will find guidance and help and also the possibility to download example methods to be run with Unicorn. To set up your ECTA system flow path to enable tandem purification, two versatile val valves are needed, as illustrated in the left picture. They are needed to direct the eluted peak of interest from the first run directly onto the second column. When the peak from the first step pa uh, passes the UV monitor, a watch command switches the valves into position to load to the second column directly. Finally, I have some results from tandem purification. On the left chromatogram, uh, you see the purification of antibody in the first step using protein G, eluted by step elution and giving a sharp and narrow peak. The chromatogram on the right-hand side shows the buffer exchange step with the antibody reconditioned into preferred buffer. The two-step purification has been performed automatically by using two unicorn methods in the method queue. So, in summary, multi-step purification enables process intensification through reduced manual interactions and increased efficiency. And I believe the case study from Hoffman LaRoche demonstrates efficient gains when purifying drug candidates. I once again like to thank you, Erwin and Matthias, for a very interesting and giving collaboration. And to start running multi-step purification today on an ECTA-Pure or ECTA-Avant, 
there are two cue cards available with guidance and inspiration. We also welcome you to continue discussions around multi-step purification and other protein purification topics on the ECTA Club. ECTA Club which is an online platform for ECTA system users supporting laboratory scale chromatography system and protein purification. So please, welcome to visit the ECTA Club homepage. Thank you very much for your attention. That was excellent. Thanks very much, Christine. I think our audience now has a great sense of the advantages of using a multi-step purification strategy, as well as the efficiency and versatility of ACA systems. Before we start the Q&A session, I want to let everyone know that this is your final chance to submit your questions for our speakers. We've gotten some really great questions already, but I'm encouraging all of you in the audience to keep them coming. All right, while everyone is submitting their final round of questions, let's begin the Q&A so that we can try and get to as many questions as possible. All right, guys, let's start the Q&A session. Uh, our first question is going to be for Erwin and Matthias. Uh, guys, um, one of our audience members would like to know, how big is the loop to collect the peak from the protein A step shown in slide six. Hello, the, the loop is two ml big. One ml would be enough, but uh, we collect 500 microliters, so the loop should be twice as big as what we collect. So one ml would be enough, but we have two. All right, thank you. Uh, Christine, this next question is gonna be for you. Um, and uh, audience member would like to know how does this how does the system know what peak to collect? Um, okay, so in the Unicorn method, you uh, add the watch command, and in this watch command, uh, it will detect when the peak starts and when it ends, and when it starts, it will switch uh, the valve to position to collect the peak. Uh, it will switch the valve after a certain delay volume that you have programmed in your method. All right, thank you. Uh, Erwin and Matisse, another question for you guys. Uh, one of our artist members asks, how much longer does the optimized double injection method need uh, that was discussed on slide 13? It's 13.5 uh, minutes longer. Just like the, the second time the sample is loaded from the auto sample loop, this is just the time it needs more in 13.5 minutes. All right, thank you for that. Uh, Chris, Christine, we have a question for you. Um, it says, we don't always have one main peak. Uh, often the impurity peaks approach target peak and size, and, uh, and the positions differ. Uh, can we deal with this? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, but as in any other chromatography purification, you have to perform um, method uh, development before you start. So what we recommend is that you run the first step and optimize that step, and then you run the second step and optimize that. And then you connect the two uh, purification steps together. So you always have to do some method development before you can start uh, the automated multi-step purification. All Hope right, that will answer the question. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, Erwin and Matisse, okay. another question for you. How was the concentration measured in the case study to calculate the recovery? We always um, measured the concentration by the peak integration with the unicorn. All righty, thank you. Uh, Christine, a uh, question for you. Uh, it says, do you need to upgrade the instrument configuration to run multi-step? Uh, 
to upgrade the instrument configuration. No, you don't have to upgrade the configuration, but you have to um, go into the administration module in Unicorn. And there you, dependent on which extra valves you have added, you have to um, uh, select the added uh, valves in the component list in the system property in the admin. So you have to edit the, the system properties of your system. But you can use the, uh, the ordinary instrument configuration. All righty, thank you. Erwin uh, and Matisse. Uh, one of our audience, member, audience members asks, um, is there a wash step of the auto sampler between different sample injections? Uh, during the method, the, the auto sampler does get a, a signal to wash, to, to perform a wash step. That injection needle is cleaned, so there's no cross contamination of two different samples. All right, thank you. Uh, Christine, uh, here's a question that one of our audience members wants to know is saying, where can I find the template method? Uh, the, template, uh, the template method that you can download or to run, yeah. Uh, as I mentioned during the presentation, in the presentation that you will be able to, to look into later, uh, there's a link where you can uh, download the, um, these methods, and you can also look in the cue cards because there are information in the cue cards of how to do the, um, how to find and download these um, methods. All righty, thank you, Christine, for that. Um, Aaron and Matisse, one of our audience members, asks, where in this process did you adjust the pH uh, of the eluate? from protein A columns? It's actually not um, adjusted the pH. It's just selected in the, in the loop uh, with a pH of 3 as we loop and then directly loaded onto the size of solution column. And then actually the pH is adjusted on the column, on the size of solution column, but not in the loop. It stays for two minutes or so in, in pH 3. Okay, thank you. And Christine, we we have uh, one question for you. Uh, which combination of steps in a multi-step method is most relevant, and in which order? Um, well, uh, of course, it depends on your application. But uh, I would say that um, the first step, uh, the best way to do this is to have a capture step in the beginning with a protein A or a ion exchange uh, column. And the most important thing is when you combine different steps, that the second step is the complementary step. So if you're using ion exchange in the first step, you, can, you should not use it as the second step or uh, to protein A steps. So, so protein A and gel uh, size exclusion is uh, a very good start, I would say. But you can make any combinations, of course, just uh, in the same way as you do in ordinary chromatography development. All right, thank you, Christine. Uh, Erwin and Matisse, we, we have a couple, uh, couple of questions for you guys, so we'll start off. Um, uh, one of our audience members wants to know, why is it not practical to load three or four loop volumes? Uh, well, as I explained in the introduction of our part, uh, we want to purify 24 samples within 24 days, as the, in 24 hours, of course. Um, as the sample uh, fraction, the auto sampler can only have 24 samples. If you would load four loop volumes, you have to, you have to occupy four spots in the auto sampler. So you could only purify six samples in one go. And for that, I would use other machines. And that would be like a 14 ml sample. And I think that you can purify this with other machines more efficiently. All righty, thank you for that. Um, we have another question for you guys. Um, one of our questions, one of our audience members wants to know, they, they say 100 microliter monoclonal antibody select sure. 
Uh, is that custom packed? No, we pack it in-house. It's like I, at least I never found one on the GE homepage, a 100 microliter column. And so we packed it in-house ourselves. All righty, thank you guys. And one more for you. Um, is a multiple column valve necessary for two-step purification? Um, yes, it is, because uh, with, uh, when you have just one column position, where you can connect just one column, you cannot do a multiple, um, multi multiple step uh, purification. You need to have uh, more. Uh, you need to have more than one column connected to the machine. That's why you need the multiple column one. All right, thanks, guys. Um, and it looks like with that, we've come to the end of our webinar. Um, I'd like to remind everyone that uh, the webinar will be archived on our site for six months at www.genengnews.com. So if you missed parts of it or want to watch it again or want to forward it to your friends and colleagues, which we always recommend, you can do that. Uh, I'd like to thank Christine, Erwin, and Matthias again for their informative presentations. And I'd like to thank the audience for their attention and thoughtful questions. And a very special thanks to GE for sponsoring this webinar. So hopefully we'll see you again soon at another Gen webinar in the near future. And goodbye for now.